Hey guys, happy new year and welcome to Hope Rescue Podcast. This is Kimberly and Tim Scott and we are here about six good days into the new year. How's that going up for on, you on the new year's Checking up resume. on those resolutions. Yeah, right, Yes, right. yes. So I, we talked last time, which was before New Year's, a couple days before New Year's. Yeah. But we said that 60% of people mm -hmm. make New Year's resolutions. So 60% of you make New Year's resolutions yeah. only, was it 6 or 8%? 8%. 8% mm -hmm. actually follow, can through. follow through. So here's, here's a scripture for you. <laughs> this is going to be convicting. Ready? Wow. Galatians 5, 7. You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Okay, thanks for listening to the podcast. We'll we're, we're gone. No, but he was actually, you know, I want to put this in context. So I do a little bit of teaching here. It's kind of beside the point. But the Galatians had a huge change that they had come mm -hmm. to. So they had come to Christ and left um, kind of the legalistic standards and obligations of Judaism. Uh, and so they were... Uh, free from the yoke of slavery. So he says, you were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Galatians 5.1 says, for freedom Christ has set us free. Mm -hmm. Stand firm therefore and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. And he's talking about getting back under the law. Mm -hmm. And what was happening was the thing that was hindering them was uh, false teachers. Yeah. So here's what happens when we make a New Year's resolution. Now, that's a theological thing. They were not embracing Christ and the freedom that we have in Christ. But in New Year's resolutions, I think what happens to people when they get these obstacles, we're going to talk about these six obstacles that hinder our New Year's resolution. Mm -hmm. One of them is naysayers. Mm -hmm. It's not something you hear often. No. Naysayers. People that are really negative not Nancy's. supporting. Yeah, <laughs> negative Nancys. People that are not supporting your New Year's resolution. Uh, you'll never follow through. You know, every January we yeah. go to the gym. I've been going to the gym for almost 40 years now. Right. It's 37 or 38 years. And every January the place is packed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then by the Full end of, of good Janu intentions, <laughs> it's packed with good <laughs> intentions. And then at the end of January, they're all gone. Yeah. And we get our gym back. Yeah. So anyway, uh, here's what happens is people will will actually hinder you mm -hmm. from moving forward. Here's a secret. You can have friends that are not supportive of you. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority of people that you spend time with should be those people that move you forward, mm -hmm. that have Your a, a, a plus, a value plus, mm -hmm. added value to your life. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to get into these six obstacles. What are six things that keep us from following through, whether you have or not. Right. You don't need to stop now. If you messed up between the first and the sixth, yes. you can start over. Go ahead. So the first one is the past. Yeah. So we know the past can beat the heck up. Yeah. <laughs> over, we, we beat ourselves up over the yeah. past. So keeps us stuck. Before. Yeah. So forget past failures and move forward. Evaluate what you did to produce the failure or success, then focus on the future. I love this quote. Regret is the enemy of change. I, I actually have a, a another quote that is so good in relation to this about the past. That's better. This was my quote, so maybe yours is better. Go ahead. Yeah, mine's probably yeah. way better. <laughs> <laughs> so in the idea of looking backwards um, at this past year, now that you're entering into a new year, is to look at the losses, to take a look at the lessons, and then focus on the blessings. So okay, it's let's a break real, that down a little bit. Yeah, it's really, it's a beautiful idea to be able to look back and not beat yourself up over the past, but you take a good look at the losses that you've experienced, the we've hurt. We've had a few We've had we've 2019. Had a, yes, we have, yeah. we have. Not and as so much you, as 2018, it, but 2019. Yeah, but you don't stay there. You don't right. stay focused on the losses. You don't um, park right. your car and take out your tent and your RV and camp <laughs> yeah. there forever because that's a waste of time. Right. But what is helpful is to take a look at the lessons you've learned through it. And yeah. there's something about hitting that one-year mark when you get the, to the end of the year. You do 
grab some perspective and you start to say, yeah. okay, I, I did learn this in this yeah. situation. I've learned that this, we had a conversation with one of our daughters this last week who was talking about the incredible things she's learned this last year. And this time last year was rough for her. And we all, um, what as a, a family, we've talked yeah. together like, my gosh, look what God's done yes. in your life. And that came from her not staying in the losses, but yeah. choosing to learn the lessons yeah. and then counting your blessings, you know? So looking yeah. at the blessings through it all, because there's so much purpose in all of it. Yeah. So you, you had talked about, I, I heard you talking about this. I don't know if you did this on a, on a previous podcast, talking about going the memorial stones. Yeah. Do you remember what we were talking yeah, about? On so that? I was so. talking about how, you know, that concept of being stuck in the past and in your brokenness, how, um, in the old Testament, they talked a lot about building a memorial in right. the places where God had shown himself Faithful. Like the children of Israel went yes. across the Jordan right. to go into the promised land under uh, uh, somebody's leadership. Yeah, some, some guy. <laughs> Joshua. Yeah. Joshua, and they, and they build a memorial yeah, so, so kids not, go see it. Yeah, not just them, but next generations can right. come back and visit and say they were there was incredible peril and and uh, pain during the yeah. season, but this is the place where God showed himself faithful yeah. through it all. And I think... Um, one of my greatest concerns about this whole concept of digging up the past and the history of our childhood. And, and it's important to process those things. It's just important that you don't just process, but you, you gather the lessons and then you leave it behind it and let it become a memorial versus a burial ground, which is like going to a cemetery and just, um, focusing on the death of someone. Yeah. Instead focus on the the beauty that they brought to your life. And I think we t have a tendency when we start digging up those old bones of our past is it gets comfortable to stay in that, that broken place. And, and I don't think that God wants that for us. He yeah. wants us to, to remember what he did through the process. Yeah. And so the past can be a great instructor yes. for the future. Right. Um, that old saying, if you do what you always did, you'll get what you always got. Right. And uh, it's really true. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. need to break that. So the first obstacle to fulfilling and sticking forward with a sticking forward, moving forward with a uh, resolution. Number one is uh, the past as an obstacle. The second one is lack of knowledge. Yeah. And what I mean by that is that um, when you make a new year's resolution, you really need to have an informed decision about that. Do you know how to finish the course? Do you know how to do it? Uh, do you know how to accomplish the thing you're committing to? Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, uh, John Acuff mm -hmm. uh, wrote a book, um, Finish. Yes. Is mm -hmm. it Finish mm -hmm. or Finish? Yeah. He had one called Start, too. Did he? Yeah, well. <laughs> and Finish. I, I, I want to talk about the Finish one. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and it was actually a bestseller. He did so a good. great job. Yeah. Um, anyway, we, um, as you look at that book, uh, he really talks about how so many people set goals that are so high mm -hmm. and they don't realize what they're doing to themselves. Mm -hmm. They're setting themselves up for yeah, failure. Yeah. And we'll talk about that uh, in the next one. But um, one of the things that he talked about in writing mm -hmm. is when he writes, he thinks he's got this great thing until he shows it to his wife. And she goes, okay, maybe yeah. not so Jenny, good. Jenny, his wife. Yeah, not so good. <laughs> So, um, but, uh, one of the things he said is write every day mm -hmm. and he's a prolific writer, yeah. you know, and speaker and a lot of, um, uh, Hyatt, he said too the same thing, write something every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so let's say your goal is to write, to finish, um, a writing project as is mine this year. Mm -hmm. Every day, write something, even if it's five minutes. Yeah. I mean, normally you want to do more than that, but even if it's five minutes, at least every day, apply yourself to writing something. Mm -hmm. So uh, you need to have knowledge. So that's a tool that you can use to accomplish that goal. Think about the goal that you want. Do you really understand what it takes to fulfill that goal of that New Year's resolution? An obstacle in your way is going to be this lack of knowledge. Yeah. So what's number three? Another obstacle is having unrealistic ambition. In other words, um, you, you tend to destroy your purpose with overly ambitious goals. And I think, you know, we, we talked about this in our last episode, um, 
if you're struggling already in week one, um, how realistic are your goals? And, and maybe you need to take a look at that. But, but I think that, um, you know, what you need to do is not look at the big goal for at the end of the year, but what was your goal for this week? And did you meet that? That yeah. that's what I mean by not overly ambitious. Yeah. Okay. So let's think about that for a minute. So somebody, um, say for example, is trying to quit drinking, right? You know, maybe they have a drinking problem mm -hmm. or maybe they have a smoking problem yeah. or some kind of substance mm -hmm. abuse or mm -hmm. maybe overeating or whatever it is, mm -hmm. something that seems to be habitual mm -hmm. or even an addiction. Mm -hmm. So you go, okay, this year I'm going to, I'm going to break this. Yeah. Uh, so you start out and it's really hard right? The cold and, turkey approach. and that doesn't <laughs> yeah. mean it's unrealistic. Yeah. It just is at the beginning, it's harder than as time goes on. So part of the reason it's hard at the beginning and substance abuse is you're still feeling the physical sure. longings mm -hmm. and some of the emotional mm -hmm. longings for that behavior or that substance. Mm -hmm. The farther you get away from it, the less power it has. It usually takes several days to you know, detox and so forth. But if you're just trying to, to change some behavior, mm -hmm. um, it, it, I mean, a habit, it can be, uh, very difficult at first. And mm -hmm. as time goes on, usually it takes 60 to 90 days mm -hmm. to break those habits. I, I teach a, a course on, uh, changing habits of negative thinking. Mm -hmm. And, um, it takes a long time to break those habits. Those are really strong habits yes. of negative thinking right. and how to overcome that. Uh, it, we have 90 days. One of the things we do is 90 days of doing a Thanksgiving journal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, even though it's difficult, doesn't mean it's un unrealistic. Mm -hmm. We need to understand that, uh, it may be difficult, but is it realistic? Mm -hmm. It may be with outside of your power. You know, it may be outside of what you can really do. And I think, you know, like I was saying, if you're, what makes it realistic is if you break it down to this week, I did less drinking than I did the week before, or today I didn't drink, you know, yeah. or, or today I didn't consume as many calories as I wanted to like, you know, breaking it down in a way that's manageable is a way to accomplish the goal for the long haul and, uh, and not see the missteps as total failures and, and bombing out for good, but, um, getting back up on the horse and, and yeah. saying tomorrow's a new fresh start, you sure. know, and, and keep, let's keep going. Yeah. Number four, failure to focus on process is the number four obstacle in fulfilling your new year's resolution. Uh, this is similar to number two, mm -hmm. you know, number two is the lack of knowledge. Yeah. Number four is this idea. Yes, sure. I lack knowledge, but it's, it's a matter of focusing. Uh, so sometimes we focus on the end result and we don't think about the next step. Right. Mm -hmm. So you are not going to, let's say you had a goal to be able to lift I don't know who would want this goal. Lots of young people for a man to be able to lift, uh, 350 pounds on the bench press yeah. or 410 or whatever it is. I can tell you what my highest was, but we're not here for that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so, uh, and that was a long time ago, but anyway, so you have a goal. You can't start out, right. uh, you know, you are taking baby steps. I remember years ago I had been out of shape for quite some time finished graduate school, got my doctorate, and I went to work out. This was uh, like uh, 1981 or two or something like that. I went to the gym with a friend, and he wasn't in great shape, but he was better shape than me. And we went to the gym, and I, I remember uh, I'm doing this uh, exercise machine mm -hmm. that have, you know, you put the, the pen in to set the weights, and uh, I'm, I'm doing this machine. It was an awkward machine. I don't even remember what it was, but it was just, it felt so heavy. And I said, I think you're going to have to lower the weight. And he held the pin in front of me. He goes, the pin's not even in. There's and I'm no like, oh, okay. I mean, I was just like, it, it was like 20 pounds yes, yeah. and I couldn't lift it. Actually I could lift it, but it felt so heavy. And, um, 
you have to realize you have to work your way up to the sure. goal. So the the end result certainly is desirable, but you need to know there's a process. Mm-hmm. So an obstacle in the way of us moving forward is that we think that we're going to go from A to Z without going uh, A, B, C, D. Right. You're going to have to go through to, to make that really happen. So focus on the outcome, of course but focus on the process. What's my next step? Uh, you reminded me of this verse, uh, Proverbs 16, nine, the heart of a man plans his way. And, and don't we all, we plan our ways. Some of you are planners. Some of you are not. One of the greatest, most fun thing to do is plan for a vacation. It's kind of fun to plan what you need. What are the logistics? Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? The heart of a man plans his way. But then it says this, but the Lord Mm -hmm. establishes his steps. Mm -hmm. So even with all of your planning, it's God who is in control. He's sovereign. He's the one enacting his purpose, and that is for his glory. So one of the hindrances, kind of a willful, I'm going to do it my way. And another hindrance here that we're talking about is focusing on the end and not the process. Right, and I think that's key because... scripturally anyway, as believers, um, the Lord speaks so often to the whole purpose in the process of our lives. Mm. It's, it, it, that's really where the work happens, isn't it? Like, and even in accomplishing a goal, it's not that you hit the goal at the end of the year. It's what you learned in getting to that point through the whole year. And spiritually it, it works the same way. You know, if you, you uh, continue to lean into the Lord, and even in your in your failures, you fail forward, and you and you lean into His uh, Word and into His presence. It's um, amazing what can happen in that process over the course of a year. We we referred earlier to one of our our kids, just you know, not giving up and keep leaning yes. in. It's the process that is so precious to the Lord, and um, and to exclude Him from that equation is really not a gain at all. It's yeah. not, it's not an accomplishment, including him in your goals, um, is, is the goal. And it's interesting because in that passage, you said it, it, it talks about how the heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. He does call us to plan our way to set the sure. goals and whatever. Um, and to lean into what we feel like we need to accomplish. But the bottom line is, he's establishing our steps. So even if we go a different direction, if you're leaning into the Lord, he ultimately is guiding you. So you have to stay a little you flexible. You have to stay flexible. Mm, yeah. Sure. And not take it on as personal failure yeah. if you don't get to whichever point you thought you were going to get to. Because if you're walking in relationship with Jesus through it all, you've won. You've yeah. accomplished a goal. Maybe you didn't set it for yourself, but the Lord was establishing your steps through the oh, that's process. Good. Yeah. So what's the next one? Number five, oh, uh, uh, obstacle in the way of uh, the uh, moving forward. Number five is lack of accountability, lack of accountability. Uh, so you don't use methods of accountability. Uh, the, see, think about this. There are a lot of people that you would not want to hold you accountable. Yeah, They would true. drive you crazy. Yeah. <laughs> They're too annoying. Like me for you and you for me. Maybe your spouse is not the best person to hold you accountable. It's like, yes. okay, hold me accountable on what I eat. And then if I snack at night and you go, Tim, I I'm know. like, that's the worst no, thing I'm not ever. having it. I'm not I listening know. to you. So that's the, that's the real key of of moving forward, having the right accountability Can uh, I tell partner. a funny story right there with that? Sure, go ahead. So... We were laughing with our youngest before this because we were talking about resolutions and stuff, and and we decided as a couple to make a resolution this next yes. this in this year to to not argue so much in the car on our way to places. I like to think of it as bickering. Bickering, yes, because we yes. get I tell him how to drive, or yes, if I'm do. driving, he tells me what to do and where to go. And really, then we, yes, I do. Yes, because you're a controller and I'm a know. nagging wife. Mm. So between the two, we're kind of a hot mess. But Gracie yeah. was like. Okay, so when I'm riding in the car, I'll hold you accountable. (laughs) And to do that, she suggested that we have the MYOB cups, which is mind your own business. And so every time we break the rule and I try to tell him, no, you're supposed to be in the other lane. I'm supposed to put like a dollar in the cup. And she does tell me you need to be in the other lane. I'm like, what? Yeah. I got it here. Yeah. I got this. Yeah. (laughs) 
but and I'm not a great driver. I'll I, I own that, but it doesn't help to have somebody trying to drive the car for you right when they're not which is buying. what you do to me too when i, drive, I don't to think be so fair. But, but that's so we I love have you, but I we don't have think an accountability true. system set yeah. up and we're so we're set up for success yeah. we haven't had to test it too much this year but you know we're we're yeah. gonna keep you posted on that to see how yeah. we do we'll see how we do i i think what's going to happen is the uh myob uh-huh. is that what, mind mm-hmm. your own business jars are going to be filled with cash yes i think yes. that's what yeah. and gracie goes now do i get the money yeah i don't know but we're going to work <laughs> we that should out. give it to her so the last one is this this is our last obstacle number six of obstacles of fulfilling and keeping your new year's resolution the law of inevitability mm-hmm. and i believe the law of inevitability is a lie i don't believe there is a, a law of inevitability now, there is a law of probability, mm-hmm. like if you behave in a certain way, it's probable that you're going to continue in that behavior. Mm-hmm. But this this idea of inevitability, if you uh, behave in a certain way, uh, you will always behave in that way. If you fail in a certain way, you will always fail in this mm-hmm. way. Yeah. And I think this is one of the great fallacies that people have in relationship to uh, addiction. Yeah. I think it's a problem that people have in their relationships. Well, he's this way. He'll always be that way. That is not scriptural. Let me, let me give you some scripture. And, and we really want to close with this because this is so important. Romans 12, two. Now we can include one, but we won't, but I just want to jump in the middle of the context of Romans 12 In verse 2, it says, do not be conformed to this world. The way to do that is be transformed by the renewing of your mind Mm -hmm. that by testing you may may discern what the will of God, what it is good and acceptable and perfect. The whole idea is be transformed by the renewal of your mind. When our minds are renewed, Mm -hmm. changes our belief system. Our belief system changes our thinking. Yeah. Our thinking changes our emotions. Mm-hmm. And then our emotions uh, determine a change in our behavior. And it doesn't, you don't modify your behavior and think that's it. Or you don't bo- modify your emotions and think that's it. You really have to start with your belief. Mm-hmm. So there has to be a transformation. But that word transformation means a complete change, mm-hmm. uh, a, a complete change completely transformed you are not the same person yeah. and i think this the law of inevitability says if you do this once you'll always be that yeah and and that is an obstacle in the way so there are people it's a gold that crusher have gone, it's a gold yeah. crusher yeah. so for years they've walked in a certain way i know a guy he he actually smoked since he was about 12 years old mm-hmm. And he said he gave up smoking and he was like three packs a day of cigarettes Mm. and he wanted to give up smoking in his Mm fifties. So all of those years he'd been smoking every day over and over and over again. And, um, he decided to give it up and his wife kept saying, you'll never stop. You are addicted to this. You'll never stop. And it's not easy to stop that. Mm-hmm. That is a, I've heard that it's harder to stop that than many drugs. Yeah. Anyway, he said, no, I'm not going to listen to that. I, I can be changed. He, he is a believer in Christ and he really prayed for God's strength in this. And he really kept saying to himself, I do not have to smoke. Mm -hmm. I do not have to smoke. He kept saying that over and he's free from cigarettes and he's been free for some time. And, uh, I, I think that's the beauty of a new year's resolution. If you want to start new, even if let's say here we are the 6th of January, but three days ago, you broke your new year's resolution. Right. It's not over or this morning. Get back. Yours this morning. <laughs> Get back on the horse and keep riding. Keep yeah. going. Uh, don't give up. Don't let your failure tell you you are a failure. Mm-hmm. Don't let your setback say that's it. I'm it's over. The law of inevitability is a lie. That's from Satan. The truth of the matter is mm-hmm. 
God wants your life to be transformed. You can do this by the power of God. He wants to do this in your life. Uh, listen, we're going to have a great year. This is, uh, we started a new year, 2020, yeah. 2020, baby, 2020, 2020. <laughs> I actually didn't think I'd be this alive. This. Well, I'm sure glad you are, Tim. Yeah, me too. So <laughs> I'll probably be here for another week or two. Yeah. But good. anyway, That's it's one a, week at a time, Tim. One, one, one week at a time. I think it's one moment at a time. <laughs> one is second it, to a yeah, minute. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> it's, it's one of those things. This is a great year. Start yeah. this year out. Uh, you know, maybe try this every morning. This is the day the Lord hath made. Yeah. Rejoice and be, be glad, glad in, in it. it. Do it every mm-hmm. day. This is the year God has made. Mm-hmm. Rejoice and be glad in it. Mm-hmm. Start every day with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, make this a great year. Love people well. Love God with all your heart. Love others as yourself. Have a great new year. Enjoy this life that God has given to us. Mm-hmm. It's a great Uh, life that we live by faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Hope Rescue Podcast. God bless. See you then. Bye-bye.